FGO has been hitting us with great servant after great servant, but will that trend continue into the new year? Hello everyone, Soberoni of GNA Reviews here, bringing you a spotlight for the cute and cuddly childhood friend turned into smoking hot dami mommy, Taira no Kage Kyo. We'll be examining her stats and skills as well as going to pointers to how you utilize her effectively and an overall grade comparing her to how she stacks up to the other 5 star servants. So if you're ready to hear the safe word, then make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and ring my bell so you can catch all of these spotlight videos as they go up, and you can help out the channel. And now, on to Tyra's stats. Tyra has a max HP of 12,177 and a max attack of 12,705, which becomes 13,975 due to her Avenger class modifier. Both Tyra's attack and HP stats are average for her class, but that's a small sample size. Compared to the rest of the SSR servants, her HP ranks among the lowest, but her attack is one of the highest in the game. When it comes to hit counts, Tyra has 4 hits on her quick card, 2 hits on her arts, 2 hits on her buster, and 5 hits on her extra card. Both Tyra's NP gain and star generating are strong due to her high hit counts and double quick and arts deck. As you can guess by the extreme difference in her attack and HP, Tyra is heavily invested in offense, which is a good stat spread for a DPS. Taking a look at her skills, Tyra's first skill is Genji Accept Your Demise rank A++. This skill increases her damage against Genji enemies for 3 turns between 100 and 200%. It also increases her own crit damage for 3 turns between 50 and 100% and charges her own NP gauge between 20 and 30%, all of these effects depending on level. And finally, it'll also reduce the star absorb rate of the party except herself by 100%. Her second skill is Kagekyo Never Dies rank EX. This skill grants her 1 instance of Guts, lasting for 3 turns and reviving her with 3000 HP. The Guts is also stackable, and it grants her a unique buff called Thirst for Vengeance, which triggers every time the Guts is activated. Furthermore, this skill increases her own instant kill resistance for 3 turns, between 50 and 100%, depending on level. And finally, Tyra's last skill is Mist of Azamaru, rank B. This skill grants her 2 hits of evasion, lasting for 3 turns, increases her attack between 20 and 30%, depending on level for 3 turns, and inflicts all enemies with curse. As for her passives, Tyra has Avenger rank EX, which increases her own NP gain when taking damage by 22%, but reduces the party's debuff resistance by 12%. She has Oblivion Correction rank C, which increases her crit damage by 6%, and Self Replenishment Magic rank D, which charges her own NP gauge by 3% every turn. Moving on to her deck and Noble Phantasm, Tyra has a Quick Arts deck with Quick Quick Arts Arts Buster and a Quick Noble Phantasm. Her Noble Phantasm is Shogyo Mujo Josha Hasui, which is a single target quick attack that deals damage to a single enemy with between a 1200% and 2000% damage modifier depending on level. It also removes all of the enemy's buffs and deals 25% additional damage for each stack of vengeance that Tyra has. It also inflicts between 1000 and 5000 curse damage to the enemy for 5 turns depending on overcharge. As an Avenger, Tyra requires a ton of different ascension mats, so to make things easier, I will include a link to the ascension mat drop table in the description down below. But for level ascension, she's going to need 10 copies each of Lanterns, Lamps, Magatamas, Lanugos, Bloodstone Tears, Black Tallow, Gallstones, and Demonic Flames. And for skill leveling, Tyra is going to require 10 Evil Bones and Fiendish Chains, 12 Lanterns, Stakes, and Arrowheads, and 15 Bloodstone Tears, Gallstones, and Mirrors per skill. Ushi has gotten a massive glow up for the new year. Not only is she taller and more domineering, but she's now an SSR to boot. And not just any old SSR, but an Avenger. And that suits Tyra perfectly, because like most good Avengers, she's all about offense. In exchange for a subpar HP stat, Tyra does have one of the highest attack stats in the game and some excellent NP gain and star generating to go along with it. And that's because, much like Ushi, Tyra retains the same powerful combination of quick and arts cards in her deck. In in fact, there are a lot of gameplay similarities between Tyra and her 3 star counterpart, but more on that later. Normally a lack of buster cards would be detrimental to a pure DPS single target servant, especially an Avenger, but Tyra turns that weakness into a strength through her amazing set of skills. Right off the bat, her first skill, Genji Accept Your Demise, grants Tyra all kinds of crazy steroids. It increases her damage against Genji type enemies by a massive 200%, increases her crit damage by 100% for 3 turns, 
Legends lowers the party's star absorb rate and even charges her NP gauge by 30%. And this is Tyra's signature skill. It's like an engine that sets her up and enables her to start going off. The buff to crit damage is huge, especially since it has such a high uptime, and it bolsters Tyra's face card damage significantly. Normally, Avengers don't make for good crit DPS servants due to their horribly low star weight, but the star absorb debuff for the party, combined with her naturally ridiculous star generating ability, ensures that Tyra will almost never have any issues critting, which helps her with keeping her damage consistent. But that's not all. The best part of the skill is probably the NP battery. It enables Tyra to loop due to her high NP gain, as well as start off the battle with a turn 1 Noble Phantasm in most team comps. It gives her flexibility and allows her to start dishing out high damage immediately from the start of the battle, so she doesn't suffer from any ramp up issues the way that some servants like Jolter do. The only somewhat negative aspect of the skill is the anti Genji modifier. Extra damage is never bad, but the Genji trait is so rare that this buff will almost never come into play. On the bright side though, in the 1 in 100 chance that you do face a Genji enemy, Tyra will absolutely slaughter them. Tyra does have another good steroid in her third skill, Mist of Azamaru, which grants her a modest 30% attack buff for 3 turns, along with a mini protection from arrows evasion and an AoE curse. The skill is actually crucial to Tyra's Noble Phantasm because she has no other easy to access NP buffs in her kit. Thankfully, the attack buff does last for 3 turns, so it synergizes perfectly with both her crit buff and her NP looping. The dodge being hit based instead of turn based is also good because it makes the skill less punishing to use offensively. As for the curse, it's more of a flavor thing than anything else. Finally, Tyra does surprisingly we have another pseudo defensive skill in Kagekyo Never Dies. And while it's not her best skill, this is probably her most famous one. It grants her one instance of a stackable guts, 100% instant death resistance, and a special buff that will increase her NP damage by 25% for each guts that's activated. Theoretically, this can increase her NP damage massively, even if it only triggers once. However, it is very difficult to plan around. There are very few servants who can trigger Tyra's guts. So aside from Chen Gong, you'll just need to rely on the enemy actually killing her in order to trigger it, which isn't very reliable. However, as a defensive tool, this skill is phenomenal. The cooldown is obscenely low at only 4 turns, and since the guts last for 3 turns, this in effect gives Tyra a near permanent guts. Also since it's stackable, it can easily be abused to give her multiple guts effects along with her protection from arrows to make her semi immortal under the right circumstances. For skill priority, go with Genji first since it just does so much, followed by the evasion for her attack buff, and then Guts last. You can also pick up mana loading and extra attack damage as a pen skills. Tyra's Noble Phantasm is a simple single target quick attack that removes all of the enemy's buffs, inflicts curse, and gains additional power for each stack of vengeance. This Noble Phantasm is very strong in challenging content just due to the buff removal effect alone. It is invaluable for not only crippling servants, but also allowing Tyra to hit through enemies invincibility, evasion, and defense buffs. Tyra's high NP gain and NP battery also make this Noble Phantasm very loopable, so she can continuously suppress any enemy servant or boss. Unfortunately though, without any vengeance stacks, Tyra's NP is very weak from a damage perspective, mostly due to the lack of damage buffs in her kit. A lot of Tyra's damage will come from her insane crit potential though, with her first skill, which makes her an excellent crit DPS for quick teams. And because Tyra is such a strong star generator with strong crit buffs, she is surprisingly self-sufficient and easy to use in that regard. Another area that Tyra surprisingly shines at is her defensive utility. As I mentioned, her low cooldown, stackable guts, and her evasion make her semi-immortal and very tanky even in the toughest fights. She's an absolute beast as a solo unit and in grail fronts for that reason alone. Just about Tyra's only drawback is her lack of NP damage, which does fall behind even the single target SR Avengers. There are a few good ways of dealing with that problem though. Firstly, you can deal with it through team comps. Since Tyra is lacking in non-crit damage buffs, any support who can bolster her quick card effectiveness or NP damage is going to be ideal for her. Servants like Doman, Wu, Alex, and Osakabe Hime are 
all good examples of strong supports for Tyra. As a chaotic evil servant, Tyra benefits massively from Doman's attack and crit buffs. Wu and Alex also provide a good mix of quick up and attack buffs for additional damage, and Osakabe Hime provides a little bit of everything, crit up, quick buffs, and NP charge. Tyra's bond CE is Azamaru. It increases her NP damage by 30% and grants her one stack of guts. And this can be useful if you want to try and abuse the vengeance mechanic, but usually you're just better off giving Tyra CEs that bolster her NP damage, like Black Grail, Traces of Christmas, Imaginary Around, and True Crimson Spear Trainer. In the future, I do recommend Fist of Hail as another good option, since it starts off the battle with a burst of crit stars, while also buffing quick and crit damage, so it's good for an immediate turn 1 offensive. For command codes, just give Kyra anything that buffs crit damage and put it on all of her cards. Heavenly Child of Karama, for example, is quite strong on her, and it's also thematic. Overall, I find Tyra to be an incredibly well-rounded single-target quick servant. She's capable of very high DPS through her consistent crits and loopable NP, she has a ton of utility for challenge quests thanks to her spammable buff removal, and her low cooldown guts and evasion make her a semi-immortal tank in most battles. Her one area of weakness is that lack of raw damage on her Noble Phantasm, which can be a hindrance in some battles where bosses will just have too much HP for her to one-shot. That said though, Tyra gets an a from me. It's funny because in a lot of ways, Tyra is like the inverse of Jolter. Whereas Jolter has incredibly high firepower but almost no utility, Tyra has comparatively low firepower but the flexibility to fight in any situation. So pick your poison. Personally, I think Tyra should be up there with Melt and Kama in terms of being one of the best quick servants in FGL if she just got a small bump to her NP damage. So here's hoping for an NP interlude. And those are my thoughts on Tyra. Not only is she quite strong, but she is a blast to use and build around, and she can single-handedly solo entire grail fronts in the future. So she's worth picking up in my book. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over on our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. So Brony out. Later.